Hello and welcome to API Security with a Pinch of Salt. My name is Chris Westfall and we're back again for another edition of this video series. And today I'm joined by one of our esteemed SEs, Adam Fisher. Adam, welcome. Hi, how are you doing, Chris? I'm doing well. Uh, I'm really excited to have you on, the, on this episode because I know you come from uh, a background or you have a background in the topic that we're gonna dig into. So you can definitely speak from a, a place of authority. We're gonna talk about web application firewalls and um, go over a little bit about what they're used for and, and how they're used in API security. Sound good? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, this is exactly awesome. what we should be talking about. Awesome. So Adam, I know you've spent some time thinking about web application firewalls. Can you give us a little bit of that background really quickly? Yeah, absolutely. So, uh, you know, I was a, a product, um, you know, SME for uh, Imperva's web application uh, firewall solution and covered a, uh, you know, all of North America, a lot of the key accounts and uh, largest and some of the more complex deployments that we had, it easily uh, gave me a good uh, solid foundation to, to build a strong application security, um, you know, background on and uh, provide that uh, insight to customers. Yeah, so I'm sure you've worked with a ton of customers and, and seen a lot, of, a lot of stuff in the world of the WAF and application security, you've seen how things have, have evolved. So I think um, your perspective is going to be great on this episode. So maybe we can start off for those that aren't, you know, 100% familiar with or, or clear on what a WAF is. Can you define for us what a web application firewall is and what it does? Yeah, sure. So just like uh, we have network firewalls that secure and block, um, you know, malicious network traffic, uh, what we, you know, in the beginning of the industry, what we really found is as soon as you put one of those network firewalls in place, well, you have to put a hole through those walls so customers can access your data and access your applications. And yeah, we needed a, yeah, we needed a. I was going to say, you're talking, we're talking about uh, that hole is basically sending everything over port 80 or 443, right? Correct. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. We need some type of security then to uh, protect and inspect the traffic that is allowed through that firewall. And that's where an application specific firewall uh, comes in. Got it. So it sits at the edge of your network. It looks at, uh, or maybe it sits behind your your traditional firewall, your uh, L3, L4 firewall, and looks at uh, higher layer layers of traffic or higher layers of, of information to make decisions about blocking or allowing. Um, so I, I, you know, I know WAFs have been around for how many how many years have WAFs been around? Do you do you, do you know? Wow, almost like twenty years now. <laughs> it's been quite a while. It's like a, yeah. you know, that should be a trivia question. So they've been around for a while, and I know they've gone through a bit of their own evolution as applications have evolved. But um, you know, I'm sure folks that are watching this are also familiar with the term next gen WAF. I know a lot of the WAF vendors have kind of taken, um, you know, taken a tip from Palo Alto Networks as they uh, evolved mm -hmm. the, the the traditional firewalls. But what, what is how does a next gen WAF differ from a traditional WAF? Well, usually a, a traditional WAF has been uh, either a hardware appliance that is, um, you know, we refer to this as being in line, right? So it's, a, it's yeah. a hardware appliance that lives between the customer and the actual application and inspects all the traffic coming across the network through that device. And that has always been a, a little bit of a, a headache uh, for customers to deploy, and especially in modern uh, environments where it's uh, SaaS-based, cloud-based, uh, you don't have uh, your even your own data center to rack a hardware device. A next gen yeah. WAF was really around um, solving that problem uh, through the use of agents. You know, sometimes I want to call them sensors, but deploying something on the application server that would communicate out to a, a central console or a management server somewhere. Uh, and that's really what the next gen WAF is trying to solve. And um, but then you got to put an agent on the box, so it's, uh, yeah. it's another problem after that. And that's it. So, so functionally, uh, they're the same. Architecturally, they're they're a little bit different. They're they're trying to solve, I guess, for the um, like you said, the adoption of more cloud applications and distributed apps and things like that, where it's hard to uh, or, it, or it's impossible to deploy a piece of hardware. What what are some um, classic use cases or, or maybe, you know, classic or, or common use cases for a WAF? What did you, what did you see? How were people, why were people buying WAFs or why do people buy WAFs and how were they using them? Yeah. And it really is to block down as much traffic, uh, malicious traffic as possible, as far away yeah. from your infrastructure as you can get. And that's, yeah. you know, when we, when we look at the amount of what we can refer to as dirty internet traffic, it's easily over 50% of the traffic is, is malicious traffic these days. 
And uh, that's the purpose of a WAF is to, is to knock that down, um, free up any server resources that are being used to process that uh, those malicious requests and just turn yeah. that into customer traffic. Got it. Okay. So, um, but I, when I was, when I think of a WAF, I, I, I think of, you know, things like cross-site scripting and, and SQL injection, um, those sorts of, uh, what I would categorize as known attack types, right? They're, they're targeting a specific part of, uh, of infrastructure with a, a specific type of attack. Yeah, absolutely. So the OWASP Foundation does a great job of highlighting, uh, you know, some of the more common styles of application attacks that will that you would expect, and that's really what a WAP would be geared to protecting against. Yeah, I know. So when you talk about OWASP, I know they have a bunch of, uh, I mean, a bunch of different areas of focus. They're probably best known for the top ten around the web applications, uh, the OWASP Web Application Security Top Ten. And I, I can't remember what number injection is, but I, I know it's up there in the probably in the top uh, top five at least. Yeah, yeah, it's it, it started pretty high in the beginning, but it's slowly it's slowly uh, you know meeting its demise, if you will, moving down the list. Yeah, and actually, the, maybe we could talk a little bit about why it's moving down the list. I know that you know for for a while, SQL injection, uh, cross site scripting. I mean, those those types of attacks were really really common. Um, are we seeing less of them? And if so, why, you know, why, why is that? Yeah, great, great point there, right? And a, a great segue, because really, it's not so much that uh, we're seeing less of them as we're just seeing different applications. So yeah. uh, the WAF was geared for a certain kind of application, uh, you know, during its time, but we're seeing more and more uh, modern applications move away from, uh, you, you know, the standard browser or, um, you know, monolithic application and moving to an API driven uh, application, which leads to uh, specific attacks that uh, those applications are going to be vulnerable to. And SQL injection, cross site script, though they could still be, are a lot farther down on the list when we look at the, the more modern architectured applications. Yeah, it makes sense. I, I guess as we, as applications have evolved, the attacks have evolved, like you said, and, um, you know, for example, with SQL injection, a lot of customers have moved to a NoSQL environment, right? So SQL injection is exactly. no longer a thing, um, or at the very least, they they have. Uh, I, I think you know something like a SQL injection is well understood. So being able to handle that maybe in an AWS WAF or you know a, a, a lower end um, a simpler WAF is is something that's pretty common, right? So it's, it sounds like we have a uh, as an industry we have a pretty good handle on mitigating against those types of, of attacks. Um, That's correct. So, so you talked about, you know, the, the, we moved from uh, monolithic apps to, to these modern applications that are more API based. Um, what other implications does that have on, on the types of attacks that we're seeing today? And how is a, how is a WAF really suited to address those types of attacks? How is a WAF involved? Right. So, you know, a, a WAF is all about, uh, you know, how fast can we do the detection and we can't add any latency. So a WAF, is required uh, to really to be an inline solution. And anytime yeah. we have an inline solution, latency and customer experience uh, is a concern. And yeah. that requires a WAF to, to take different styles of detections um, to apply protections. In an API world, that doesn't work. We're not gonna be able to do um, you know, dictionary matching or pattern matching signatures to um, mitigate the attacks that an API is vulnerable to. We have yeah. to go a little bit deeper, more granular. Uh, one reason for the, that need is because APIs are unique to each uh, application and each customer. We can't have a general rule that could match against, a, you know, could protect one customer A from, and then also apply the customer's B uh, API environment. Uh, so yeah, we, need, we need something that is more granular. For sure. And I, and I know you, you say that because WAFs really depend on, I mean, architecturally, um, they're built as, or they're deployed as proxies, as you said, and they really depend on um, pattern matching, right? They depend on signatures, they depend, or they depend on configuration uh, to be customized for that environment. Um, so I guess, it, like you said, the signatures aren't applicable because everybody's API, uh, if you're creating, if I create an API, you create an API, the logic of those APIs are going to be different and, and therefore the vulnerabilities would be different. I guess, I guess, you know, SQL injection is still a thing uh, potentially with both of our APIs, but beyond that, there's a whole bunch of other vulnerabilities 
that that are that are uh, uh, you know in in modern APIs. Right? That's part of the reason why we saw, saw OWASP come to market late last year with the OWASP API security top ten, which is distinct from the web application security top ten. Right. That's correct. Um, yeah. So. Um, I guess, you know, the, the other thing I always think about is that, that API attacks are what I would consider to be low and slow, right? You can't, uh, with a proxy-based architecture, you're in line, you're looking for, um, you're looking to do pattern matching basically based on these signatures, right? Where an API attack, if you're, if you're uh, looking to figure out that unique logic as an attacker, it's gonna potentially take you hours, if not days, if not weeks to um, find those vulnerabilities and manipulate them. It, you know, with the proxy-based architecture, what, what are the limitations there that keep you from from discovering these these low and slow attacks? Well, you know, um, we definitely need to see um, the behavior of uh, the API over time, right? So we're looking for what is the legitimate traffic? How are the users interfacing with the API? How do they interact with it over a period of time? And that is something that a WAF uh, can't do. It can't sit there and build a behavior um, and not expect there to be a latency added when that inspection has to happen. So with, um, you know, with an API security solution that is able to dig granularly uh, and build a legitimate behavior, we can then see those deviations, we can see the malicious attacks over time and then continue to um, enhance or uh, continue to learn when the API changes. So, uh, yeah. you know, API applications uh, have a much faster release cycle and are more dynamic, change frequently compared to a traditional application. And so you need a security solution that will be dynamic with the API as well. Yeah, I guess it, you know, that, that kind of dovetails into another comment that we can, or something else we can discuss, which is the fact that you know, be, beyond these signatures, WAFs uh, require or depend on configuration and customization, right? So you could argue that, well, you know, my, my logic is unique to my organization, but I can tune my WAF uh, for my environment, so I should be able to catch these, you know, th these attacks that are targeting my unique logic. But the reality, mm -hmm. like you just said, is that these API environments are, are more of a moving target than traditional applications. So um, keeping up with the, the changes in the in the APIs and the application environment, keeping the you know keeping the WAF uh, configuration aligned, is, is really a daunting, if not impossible, task. It sure is. You know, it's it's you know it can be a two or three person uh, full time job really to manage a enterprise WAF uh, deployment because you're constantly evaluating rule sets, uh, modifying rule sets as the application changes, oftentimes you'll need to reevaluate what rules we have in place, what blocking rules we have in place. And yeah. it, it is, it's a lot of code writing, uh, rule writing, uh, and it's not, uh, it's not automated. Um, and anybody so you, that says that a WAF is automated just, uh, you know, doesn't know what, doesn't know what's in front of them. They're kidding themselves. I guess you, you have two options there, right? You have either you uh, hold things up because you need APIs or, or your apps to go through security review to make sure you have your policies right, or you're shipping code with, you know, potentially unknown vulnerabilities. So neither one of those is really acceptable. I mean, more likely it's the latter, right? You're shipping code. If, if DevOps wants to move at the speed that DevOps wants to move at, they're going to, you know, they're, they're going to want to push code out as quickly as possible. So um, yeah, it just, it seems like a model that, that is, uh, uh, you know, has, has a potential to have a lot of problems. So yeah, maybe we can talk a little bit about everybody. <laughs> Maybe we could talk a little bit about salt and our approach and how we approach this differently, because I know that, you know, oftentimes, um, you know, we, when we talk to customers, uh, they, they think of their WAF and, and you know, we, we educate them as to why something different is needed. You started to allude to that in your earlier comments, but uh, how is our approach different and how, you know, how does that help us solve for the API security problem? Yeah, absolutely. So, you know, the, the approach we've taken is a, is a complete behavior uh, profiling and machine learning approach where uh, we automatically adjust our protections based on the legitimate traffic that we're receiving. And this allows us to uh, be at a very granular level of detection and, uh, you know, more, you know, much more deeper into the API where the attacks live in an API as opposed to say a, a traditional application. So we can uh, detect the attacks uh, without rule writing, without 
uh, business input or any anticipation of what an attack might contain. Uh, yeah. We simply look at legitimate traffic and it, it's, it's an active defense posture where we are adjusting the protections based on the activity that we're detecting. And that, that doesn't require the business to add any of that input in. We just need to see, we just see the traffic, right? We look at the actual live requests in the system and adjust our protections based on that. Yeah. And yeah, the other thing to point out is that we do this out of band, right? So we're not in line like the WAF. We're not, there, there's no risk of adding latency. There's no risk of breaking functionality. Uh, there's no risk of, you know, uh, of those sorts of things that, that people are typically uh, concerned with, right? So yeah, very averse too. So there's, there's none of that exactly. And it alleviates, you know, the last thing businesses need today is another inline solution. Uh, they've, they've been busy adding those over the last 10 years and uh, yeah. they don't need to add another one. No more, no more bumps in the wire. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> well, awesome. Uh, Adam, anything else to add that we may have missed? Anything else you want to cover? Well, yeah, no, this is a, this is a great topic. It's a very important topic as uh, the industry and applications are shifting away from yeah. uh, the traditional application. Applications are becoming, you know, cloud-based, uh, API-based, and because of that, the attacks are changing. And uh, we need a, just like we have a modern architecture now for application, we need modern security to, to secure those. Yep, makes sense. Well, I know we, we just kind of scratched the surface on, you know, on API security and, and even the WAF topic and, and you know, what, what's needed. I'm sure we'll be digging into this more in upcoming episodes, but thank you very much for coming on and, and sharing some of your perspective and I look forward to having you on again soon. Always good to talk, Chris. Thanks for your time. Awesome. Thank you.